Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 17063. This build includes a number of new features and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 17046. So it's been a while since the last public preview build, almost a month in fact, which means this build in particular is packing a whole bunch of new features and enhancements that are actually noteworthy for a video. In fact this may be one of the biggest builds we've received in a while, it's definitely in the Redstone 4 development cycle at least, since up until now Redstone 4 has been kind of boring. Uh, but this build is where everything changes, quite literally. So diving straight in, the first noteworthy changes are with the taskbar. The taskbar's translucency effect in this build is now blurred. It's the acrylic effect you find in the start menu and the action center. In previous builds, the taskbar's translucency wasn't blurred, which looked out of place when compared to, say, the start menu, for example. If we open an app here and drop it below the taskbar, you'll see that it blurs it, much like you'd expect, which looks great. And you can also see our wallpaper blurring through the taskbar as well, which looks fantastic. Uh, now, whilst we're on the subject of the taskbar, Taskbar, you may have noticed the task view icon has changed slightly and that's because task view isn't just task view anymore. It includes a feature called timeline which allows you to go backwards in time up to 30 days and resume something you were working on in the past. So this is my timeline which allows me to scroll through all the activities I've been doing over the last 30 days and resume anything that I want if it supports timeline of course. So not every app supports timeline yet, not all of them need to since not every app requires something to be resumed to. Uh, but in the case of things like Microsoft Edge, Word, PowerPoint, you name it, stuff like that, uh, you can resume documents and essays and whatnot. So let's take a look here. If we go back to December 11th, you can see that on December 11th, I was editing a Word document and reading a review in Microsoft Edge. December 12th, I was doing a whole bunch of Microsoft Edge browsing. December 13th, I was checking Twitter and reading something about Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Uh, and yesterday, I was doing a bunch of different things. I was editing something in Notepad. I was reading an article in the News app. I was uh, editing a, an image in Paint. And if we go into all activities here, you'll see that I was also checking out a location in the Maps app. And I can click on any one of these and it will take me back to exactly where I was doing something within that app. So here I was yesterday taking a look at the Trafalgar Square location in the Maps app and it's taken me right back to where I was. If we go back into a timeline here, let's open up uh, an article. Let's open up the Sports app here. And that will take me straight to the article I was reading in the sports app. Uh, I won't have to go into the sports app and find it manually again. It just takes me straight there, uh, which saves time as well. And as you can see, since this is still task view at the top here where it says now, all of my currently open apps are located. So just like task view in the past, except now there's a timeline below it, which allows you to go backwards in time up to 30 days. Virtual desktops is also still here at the top. You can press new desktop and switch between desktops much like you did in the past. Now it's also worth noting that this will pick up activities you've done on other devices as well. If you're logged into two devices with the same Microsoft account, you'll be able to see the activities of each device on each device. So if I had a Surface tablet, for example, hooked up to the same Microsoft account that I'm logged into on this device, I would be able to see all the things I've done on that tablet here as well and resume those activities on this device. So let's pretend, for example, that this here was something I was reading on another device. It would come up here saying, this was read on your Surface laptop or whatever. And then I click on it and it will literally take me back to what I was doing on that device here, which is Brilliant, fantastic. So let's resume another activity. Let's go down here and open up this photo. For example, I was looking at an album the other day and I can now resume that album exactly where I left off, straight through timeline, which is really nice. And of course, if we go into um, one of these down here, we can pick up an article that we was reading in Edge and uh, jump straight back to where we were, which is fantastic. Now, whilst we're on the subject of Edge, let's take a look at some of the changes Microsoft has made here as well. So in this build, Microsoft has updated the Edge UI. It now features a more prominent acrylic title bar, as well as the reveal effect in the address bar and buttons nearby it. So as you can see here, when I'm highlighting elements within the address bar, you can see that nice reveal effect that we see elsewhere in the system now, and it looks fantastic. You can also see it in these buttons up here as well. It just looks really, really nice. And as I mentioned as well, the acrylic title bar is now more prominent and just looks great. In previous builds, it was a little bit more muted and as such, wasn't really noticeable, but now it's definitely noticeable and your wallpaper blurs through really nicely, I feel. So moving right along, the next noteworthy changes are with the settings app. The settings app has received a redesign in this build. I think it looks much nicer now, a lot more organized, if you will, even though the layout is still the same, I think. Uh, but yes, everything is now organized in rows, which looks great. Uh, and if we click into an area, you'll see that the left-hand sidebar, if you want to call it that, uh, has the acrylic effect now, which looks great. And your wallpaper blurs through it, much like any other acrylic effect elsewhere. And it just looks fantastic. We have that same reveal effect here. If we click on something, it gives you that nice uh, 
click animation and overall these settings app now looks fantastic if we go into another area here you'll see that uh, there's a bigger gap at the top here with titles which are now a lot larger and the home icon has changed from a settings cog to an actual home icon which looks great so whilst we're here let's take a look at the changes microsoft has made to the language install ui in this build it's no longer something that you have to manipulate in the control panel and it's no longer an ugly ui in the settings app it's now updated and looks fantastic so if you want to install a language pack here we can do so we can set that as our default display language which we won't and that will now download a language pack which is powered by the windows store now so all the all the language packs are in the windows store and this is now downloading it from that windows store you know and love and there we go as you can see there using the microsoft store logo uh, the local language experience pack just got installed which is fantastic. Far more simple than previous. I think that's a nice addition. Now, another thing I've noticed in this build is the reveal effect now works when using light mode as well. Previously, it didn't because the the actual reveal effect used a light and went on light mode, it didn't really show up. But now it does, as you can see here, very slightly it's there. And if we go back to the, um, the home page here, you can see that the reveal effect is working. It now uses a dark reveal instead of a light reveal, which makes sense uh, when you're using light modes because it actually shows elements now, which is very nice indeed. So moving on, the next noteworthy changes are with Cortana. Not much has changed on the surface for Cortana. Uh, the only minor thing here is the fact that the your user profile icon is now here as well as in the start menu, likely to give it consistency with the profile icon picture found on the start menu. Uh, but the bigger change is to do with the Cortana Collections app. It's no longer a Collections app. Well, not really. It's a Cortana Lists app. So you can create lists and add lists to Cortana through this dedicated lists app now. So as you can see here, if we go to create a list here, we can call it Windows Surface Devices. Click Create. And I can now add all the items that I have that to do with Surface. So Surface Laptop, Surface Book, Surface Phone. And then I can tick off all the ones I actually have. And the ones I don't have, I will obviously leave unticked. And that now syncs up to Cortana. So if I have the Cortana app on my phone, I can go into Cortana, check my lists, and I can see all the lists and all the things I've ticked off and stuff. So if we go into Cortana ourselves here, go into our notebook, which by the way, the notebook has been updated. It looks a lot different now. And in my opinion, looks a lot better. If we go to something, we can add something to our to-do list. We can add, uh, I can buy some health insurance. Why not? So I need to buy some health insurance. And as you can see, that hopefully that added to it here. Yes, buy health insurance. So I can now tick that off, pretend I bought health insurance, and that will be ticked off throughout all of the Cortana devices that I own, as long as it's hooked up to the same Microsoft account, of course. But yes, a brand new Lists app, I guess. I mean, I don't know who was asking for this, but hey, there you go. It's now Lists. Um, This is uh, a weird looking app though. It doesn't have any acrylic or fluent design elements yet. Maybe it will down the line. Also the Window controls up here seem a little bit weird. But anyway, apart from that, yes, this is a list app now, which is great. Now, my people, my people have received a small change in the sense that they've just changed the background from pure black to acrylic, which I'm not complaining about. I love the acrylic effect. If I could throw acrylic on everything, I absolutely would. And in this case, Microsoft has added it here in the um, My People UI as well, or at least the My People Hub. So if we go into a, a pinned contact, you'll see that it's still not acrylic anywhere. And that's per app. So some apps may include the acrylic effect, others may not. Uh, speaking of app support in My People, the People app has been updated, uh, which is something that rolled out to the fast ring in general. So this, this was in the last build as well, but it gives you a brand new uh, My, Pe uh, My People contact list UI sort of thing. So as you can see here, I'm getting all of the details for Dan here. You can see upcoming events, conversation, combined contacts and more. If you go into the People app itself, you'll see that it looks entirely different now. In my opinion, it looks ugly, but that may be because it's not finished yet. But that's the new People app which looks great. Also, I just want to take a look at the Mail app. As you can see, I've taken, we've seen the Mail app before, but in this build, I feel like the UI is finally starting to come together with the acrylic effect in the taskbar and the acrylic effect in the start, sidebar here in the Mail app. I just think Windows 10 is finally starting to look good and that's incredibly exciting. UI is important when it comes to software. That's There's no doubting it. And up until now, Windows 10 has not had the best UI. But with Fluent Design and Resident 4 and Resident 5, that's all going to change, hopefully. And with this build, I'm finally starting to see that change take place. 
which is very exciting. But apart from that, that's pretty much it for this build. Lots of nice changes. Uh, there's probably a lot more that I haven't covered. Um, but in this case, we've taken a look at some of the noteworthy bigger features in this build. Timeline is a really big deal, and that will tie into Microsoft Sets thing, which Microsoft announced recently, which gives every app a tab UI. Uh, we'll talk more about that when that's available in the Insider Builds. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.